pop it. Most gracious God, we say thank you for this hour that you've given us to study your word. Reveal, teach us, Lord. Show us what you have for us. Show us the victory that you have. Show us uh, the, the confirmation of the blood. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, that you speak to our hearts. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our spirits, Lord. And help us more to be more like you. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, saints. We're in Revelation chapter 19. Amen. Revelation chapter 19. We we finished uh, Revelation chapter 18, watching the destruction of Babylon. We, we saw Babylon fall down finally, and uh, we understand the importance of the Babylonian Empire and that it was the root of evil. Uh, we trace back that it was located on the rivers Euphrates. We trace back to uh, the first murder, the first lie, uh, the, the first uprising, um, all came out of Babylonian. And this empire was an empire that Satan himself uh, pulled energy from and put energy into uh, to attack the church. Babylon meant basically an enemy of God. It meant an enemy of the church and anyone that had anything to do with God's church was going to find uh, a win in their face whenever they came against Babylon. Uh, we saw uh, the destruction of Babylon in chapter 18. Not only that, but we saw a lot of the friends, a lot of the friends of Babylon, they, they celebrated. I mean, they didn't, they didn't celebrate. They, 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 they cried, actually. They, they, were, they were upset. Um, they had a point where they were celebrating because it looked like they were in power. It looked like they were in control. It looked like the ball was in their court. It looked like they had done uh, uh, all that they could do. But with the fall of the empire of Babylon, all of those friends began uh, to cry and complain and weep and mourn over, over this fallen city. Um, and in Revelation chapter 19, where we're going tonight, the word of God is returned. Um, after the fall of Babylon is where we pick up 
uh, with the where the word of God was returned. So without any further delay, I'm going to jump into uh, the word right now and do some reading and then we'll go back and take a look at what God has for us. Amen. Uh, do we have any co-hosts on here that's watching the door? Hey Amen. That would help me if I didn't have to let people in. Amen. Thank you. Revelation chapter 19 uh, says, After these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For truth and righteousness are his judgments, and he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again, they said, Alleluia. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne saying, Amen, Alleluia. And the voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God for ye his servants, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And, and, and I heard as, as it were the voice of a great multitude and as the voice of many waters and as the voice of mighty thundering saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he said unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called into the marriage, supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true saints of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon the white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he should rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the winepress of, with the fierceness of wrath of almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings Lord, and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and all that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw a beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worship his image. These were both cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of them that sat upon the horse, which sword proceedeth out of his mouth. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Amen. Let's go back and just do some reflecting on these 20 verses in, in chapter 19. Amen. What a powerful, 
way to start. There, there's a word that was used in here. I don't know if you all were paying attention. Um, John R. Ryder starts off saying, he heard a great voice and much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation, power, glory, honor. Listen to what he says now. That word, Alleluia. If I ask anybody to tell me something about the word, Alleluia, what would it be when you when you hear the word hallelujah it's it's a little different from salvation it's a little different from glory it's a little different from honor as a matter of fact salvation glory and honor are all separated with commas in in, in this uh particular verse however hallelujah has a semicolon uh which 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 means there's a sub they're saying hallelujah salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Now, one thing about this word, alleluia, most people have heard that alleluia is the highest praise. A amen. Some of you probably heard that. Amen. Just, just, just amen. Say amen or wave your hand. If you've heard that alleluia, why mm -hmm. is alleluia the highest praise? Um, if you really want to know why hallelujah is the highest praise, you, you, let's take a look at the New Testament and see how many times you can find the word Alleluia. Um, I, for my Bible scholars, some of y'all uh, may know that the word Alleluia is four times in chapter 19. The word Alleluia was mentioned four times in chapter 19 of Revelation. But if you look through the entire New Testament, you will not find that word. Oh, come on, come on. Y'all don't get this. That word is so powerful. When the, the, a great voice of much people said, hallelujah. Uh, this praise was so powerful uh, that this word was not used in the entire New Testament. Look it up. St. Matthew, St. Mark, St. Luke, St. John. Keep Acts Romans. Look through the whole New Testament. You will not find the word hallelujah. Yet and still, we hear it at church every Sunday. Did you know it's only mentioned in the New Testament four times? And this is the book right here, book chapter 19 of Revelation, where all of a sudden this word hallelujah came out of nowhere, and that makes it the highest praise. Now, now, why did it come in chapter 19? Well, you got to look back and see what happened in chapter 19, in 18, with the fall of Babylon, with the roots that, that held that tree up. You see, with the foundation being taken out of the building of Satan, out of the house of Satan, uh, the, the, the Bible says a great voice of much people in heaven. All oh, the angels shouted, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. See, what that tells me, uh, that, that these folk in this time were in, in, in something close to a pandemic situation, but as the pandemic grew, their praise got stronger. When, 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 the, when the pandemic got to a point and, and it finally went out, it finally went out, their praise. What it shows was God's redemption. It shows God keeping his promise. It shows God giving his children favor. Hallelujah, salvation, honor, glory, honor, and power unto the Lord our God. We sing that song. Hallelujah, salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord our God. This is where the song came from, for the Lord our God, true and righteous in his judgments. He has judged the great whore. Now, now, you know, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication. And, and you look at, at, at the, uh, uh, the analogies, basically, that are here. The, the, the great whore, he's, that's Satan. Now, you got to remember in relationship to a marriage, uh, a prostitute is probably one of the worst things, um, one of the biggest enemies uh, that can come to a marriage. So, so, so symbolically, we're looking at the devil being a great whore who, who basically stole something that wasn't his, that, 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 that took something that didn't belong to him um, and, and corrupted the earth. <laughs> and, 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 and it blends the blood of servants of uh, of his service is his hands. So this true and righteous God, this true and righteous God gave judgment in chapter 18. Now we're in chapter 19 and you look at verse three and look what they said again. <laughs> Not just one. Listen to me. They say that word 
until they got to the book of Revelation, until they got to chapter 18, 19, past 18. Uh, see, this is where their enemy fell down. See, see, there's a promise for God that tells you you don't have to worry about your enemy. But when God knocks your enemy down, when they're trying to strike you, that deserves a different kind of praise. Yeah, I know that God has kept food on, on, on your tables. I know that God has made a way for each and every one of you, and you've got a reason to be thankful. But what I'm saying, when God does something in your life till it's that big, where thank you just don't seem like it's enough, where, where thank you, Lord, just don't seem like it gets it. And, 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 and I'm talking about that was a Revelation 18 experience. When they came out of Revelation 18 with that victory, they needed a new praise. See, that's where some of us right now, as we come out of this pandemic, our old praise just won't work. We need um, oh. a new praise. Some of us right now ain't been in church in over a year, but we come in church, we sit like a, like a choir mice, can't move, can't clap our hands, won't say hallelujah, these folk in this church, hallelujah, uh, uh, in heaven, in this heavenly church, uh, hallelujah, they said hallelujah again. See, it wasn't good to just say once. They broke out a new praise. Notice this. And this is how you, how, when, when the God gives you victory, this is your victory then. First, you break out a new praise. Your old praise just won't do because God has done a new thing in you. And when he does a new thing in you, he deserves a new praise. The second thing that they did here in verse three is the Bible says, again, they said. So, so, so it, it wasn't half, uh, uh, it, it wasn't lackluster. I, 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 I didn't just rig my praise, but, but I said it once and I said it loud. It said much people with a loud voice said hallelujah again and her smoke rose up forever and ever. Now look at verse four. So you probably want to wonder what happened. Uh, we got a reunion here in verse four. I think we're in chapter seven where we, we read about the four and the 24 elders and the four good beasts that fell down and worshiped God uh, that sat on the throne. Uh, look in verse four. There's that word again, y'all. Amen. Alleluia. We get over to verse five. And a voice came out of the throne saying, praise our God and his servants and ye that fear him, both great and small. It didn't matter who you were. It says, praise our God, everybody. It didn't matter what church you went to. It says, praise our God, everybody. It didn't talk about longevity. It didn't talk about titles and positions. It says, whether you were great and small, everybody should be praising God right now. He says, as he heard the voice of the great multitude, as the voice of many waters, and we're going to have to do a study on waters. Uh, it, I got confirmation today. Uh, as the voice of many waters. And as the voice of mighty thunderings saying, listen here, here is the fourth time that you're going to see this word in the New Testament in between verses three, four, five, and six. Four verses has this one word in it. And most of you probably didn't know that you can't find hallelujah nowhere else in the New Testament. Do you see how there is a reserved praise for a reserved situation? When God brings you out of a, when he saves you a little bit, I can understand some of you got a little bit of praise. But, but when your testimony is God has done so much for me, I just can't tell it all. Then your praise is oh, a new me. praise right now. You can't give God the lackluster pre-COVID-19 praise that you kicked around. Right now, if you are listening to me, he has brought you through a storm that 600,000 people in this country did not make it through. And oh, what I'm trying to tell you is if you want to get to a new level with God, you got to have a new praise. The first thing is your old praise was broke. Turn it in for a new praise. The second thing is don't just stop one time. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. And, and, and the sound of it was the voice of a great multitude as the voice of many waters, as the voice of mighty thunderings. That's how church ought to sound. That's how church, when, when the you get up and sing, the, the pastor should never have to say, praise the Lord with these young people, amen? That, there should be somebody praising God for the fact that we got young people in the church. A, a, amen, amen. Uh, hallelujah for the Lord God, omnipotent reigner. The, all, the Lord God who's all powerful, <laughs> he's on the throne. Other words, 
Yeah, and this is for somebody special on this on this group right now. Somebody uh, needs to hear these next few words. Um, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. Let us be glad and rejoice. Somebody has been looking for their joy for some years. Uh, there's somebody who can't be glad about nothing. To be glad means to be happy. There's somebody whose focus is always on the wrong side of the street. There's somebody who, who, who struggles to get joy and it flees them because it only lasts for a moment. Uh, there's somebody that, 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 that don't know how to, you can't rejoice if you don't have no joy. Rejoicing comes, the root word is joy. It means to do it again. Rejoice means a process, not just the event of joy, but a process of joy. See, some people can only praise God when he does something physical for them. Some people can only praise God when they get a little overtime. Some people can only praise God when they got $10 above being broke. But, but, but you've got to learn to praise God in all things. The Bible says in verse seven, this is not just he brought me from a line, but look what he's done. Let us, not just one person, not just, but let us together be glad. Other words, it's an internal condition. Being glad means the joy is on the inside of you. It does not come from the outside. It doesn't come from a boyfriend or a girlfriend. It doesn't come by having a husband and a wife. I tell you what, because most husband and wife will tell you it ain't easy as you make it look. But, 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 but give the honor to him. And he, look, look at part B of verse 7. It says, for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready. Now you just saw in previous verses that there was a whore somewhere around, that there was a prostitute somewhere around. And but 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 you ought to be glad and rejoice and give honor to God because it's time for the marriage of the Lamb. See, God waited to use this particular, I think it was Matthew 26 or 27, when he talked about the church being his bride. And look how intimate Jesus wants of a relationship with you. Look at the intimacy uh, of, of how Jesus didn't just say you were a servant. It wasn't an employer-employee relationship. Uh, it wasn't a slave and a master relationship. Look, it wasn't a BFF or a best friend or girlfriend relationship. Jesus says, I love you so much, I want to make you my wife. This is the greatest love song in the Bible right here when, the, when Jesus is talking about the marriage of the Lamb, hallelujah, and his bride. Oh, but, but you know what? The, the, the devil was the whore that deceived the church, that had some folk acting like they were on the Lord's side, but they were drinking the wine of the devil, of the, of the devil's fornication, as in verse two. But here it is. Here is the time. Babylon has been defeated. And guess what? In, ver in chapters 19 and 20, you're going to find the three serpent, the dragon, uh, the, the false prophet, and, and the serpent all will get their doom. And John's going to break it down blow by blow. But somebody right now need to be glad and rejoice because you know what? It could have been worse. I know that you're going through something right now, but your situation could have made a left turn, but it made a right turn and it could have ended up in a worse place place. Somebody need to rejoice right now and realize that if it wasn't for God making that decision when he did, your life would be even, listen here, give honor to him for his wife have made herself ready. That means the church is getting ready. I want to ask you right now, are you making yourself ready for the groom? Are you making yourself for the marriage, ready for the marriage of the lamb? His wife have made herself ready and, and, and it was granted that she should be arrayed and fine linen, hallelujah, uh, clean and white, for the linen is the righteousness of the saints. That, and in order to put on white, in order to wear it, you, you've got to have some righteousness in you. Uh, uh, fine linen, clean and white, uh, it's the righteousness of the saints. The faithfulness of the saints allowed them to, to prepare themselves for the marriage. See, there was a period where the church had to wait for that groom. Hallelujah. If you've ever been single waiting on somebody, waiting on a wife or a husband, you know what it's like when you're waiting for whoever it is God has in your life. This is, Jesus says, there's a marriage of the lamb where the lamb will meet his bride. That bride is the church. And in order uh, for that wedding to happen, the church has got to be prepared. In order for that, that wedding to be a celebration for you, you've got to be ready. It ain't about what, what what daddy did. It ain't about what your wife does. You got to be ready. <laughs> it ain't about uh, your husband's faithfulness. Are you faithful? Are you committed? You Everybody's got to go 
for themselves. Everybody has to have a relationship and know God and God reveals himself in different ways to people. He says, I have flock, sheep of other pastures. In other words, there's some folk that you don't know that God's got on his team just because they don't go to your church, just because they don't sing your songs, just because they don't have the same denomination behind does not mean that God does not breathe and move in other people. Listen here, there was a time, I don't care what denomination you're in, you can be Kojic, you can be Baptist, you can be Methodist. There's been a period in all denominations of church where the church was just weak and had no power. The Bible says that this, 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 this bride uh, was dressed in fine linen, which was the righteousness, in other words, faithful. In other words, de deserving of the groom. A and he said unto me that the angel's talking to John. He says, uh, uh, right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage of the supper of the lamb. And he says unto me, these are the true sayings of God. If you get an invitation, you bless. Somebody right now need to, to slap that devil right now. If you get an invitation to the marriage, you bless you. Listen here. If you own the guest list, and I want to ask you right now, you better check and make sure that your name is on this invitation. The Bible says in verse 10 that John fell and worshiped him, fell to the feet of the angel and worshiped him. Look what the angel told him. He says, no, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. I don't deserve it. Didn't you hear what I just said? Honor, glory, power, all of this goes to God. He already told him, he says, don't do that. I'm your servant. I'm your brother. And the same testimony that you got, I got. See, 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 th this angel understood. See, that's the thing about man. We don't, we get the big head. Sometimes we get power. Sometimes we get a, a title. Sometimes we get the big head. This angel was living in heaven and he knew that he didn't deserve worship. But, but there are people on earth that live on earth and still want to be worshiped. Uh-oh. Oh, let, let me go make this plain. See, see, anything that was created does not deserve to be worshipped. Uh, anything that was created does not deserve worship. Think about it. Think about it. What was the only thing that wasn't created? Uh-oh. There you go. In the beginning. He said, let us make man in our image. Okay. So, so, so the three weren't created. <laughs> the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost were not created. Everything that followed was created. So uh, that means it does not deserve worship. Listen, I, I, I know you love your, your spouse, but they don't deserve to be worshiped. Uh-oh. 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 I know. I, I know you love your children. I love mine too, but they don't deserve to be worshiped. The worship, God deserves your worship. Oh, my hallelujah. God deserves the honor, the glory, the power unto the Lord our God. He deserves it. We make the mistake because sometimes, you know, we worship automobiles. Uh-uh. I've seen people clean their cars better than they would a church or anything in a church. We worship things. We worship places, places that we want to go. We worship money. Oh, I can tell. If you don't ever give any, you worship it. If you don't ever give any, if you don't ever buy somebody lunch every time or donate or have a charitable heart or support church, then, then, then uh-oh. Amen, lights. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said, see thou, do it not. And that's what I want to tell y'all right now. Whatever you put in front of God, do it not. Whatever is taking all of your money, do it not. Whatever's taking all of your time, do it not. Whatever has you uh, in a place where you off your square, the angel's telling John, get up off of your knees and stand up on your feet and say hallelujah. See, the problem is, 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 is if he didn't know, because the angel came from heaven, he started worshiping. <clears throat> and, and, and listen here. Listen, the angels were created by God. God deserves your worship. God deserves your praise. God deserves it. Verse 11 says, and I saw heaven open and behold, a white horse. And he that sat was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he judged and he made war. See, that's what I like about this. <laughs> Oh, this God of this Jesus of mine. Not only was he the judge, but he also was the army. Oh, somebody missed that right there. Let me, let me see. Not only will he make sure that justice happens in your life, uh, not only will he make sure uh, that you get uh, treated the way you should, but also if anybody is an enemy, he'll make war. Not only 
Will he fight your battles in a courtroom, but he'll fight your battles in a war field too, in a war zone. He is just that good. The Amen. Bible says his were flames of fire, which meant truth, which meant discernment, which meant you can't fool God, which meant he, the, that fire burned through it. Uh, and, and his head were many crowns. And I, I think about the last time they saw him when he had a crown of thorns. But guess what? He says, it ain't over. I shall return. Don't count me out. The, the way it looks right here uh, with me giving up the ghost and the nails in my hands and nails in my feet, don't you be discouraged. I need some Christians right now in the face of what seemingly is my death to say hallelujah and praise God right now because oh, no. this story does not end the way that it started. This fight was set up uh, like a Las Vegas bookie right now. Uh, he got knocked out the first 10 rounds but came back in round 11, hallelujah, and won the fight. It, 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 it's in the same thread. Many clowns. No more thorn, thorn, uh, thorns on his head. And, 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 and now he had a name written. Uh-oh. Huh? See, see, they mocked him. They mocked him as king of the Jews and put a crown of thorns on his head. But the Bible says, oh, I, 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 hallelujah, I've got a name that no man knows, that no man knew but he himself. And see, uh, the, I, I have to get just a little deep on that. Uh, uh, when a man knows your name, Hmm. Uh, uh, put it this way, when a man can see through you, when a man knows everything about you, when a man, uh-oh, uh -oh, uh -oh, when a man knows, but, but here is a name that no man knew. See, knowing the name almost gave control, knowing how to define, knowing what you were called by, but here is a name that no man knew. My, my studies say, say that name was, was Yahweh. It was letters that represented that secret name, Yahweh of God, that no man knew, that no, no man understand. And I'm so glad that I serve a God that nobody can understand. Amen. That, 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 that nobody knows, that has all power, that's omnipotent, oh, that has all knowledge. But he himself, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. I don't know if that blood was blood from, from the cross, just to remind them. You thought you killed me, or it could be the blood of your enemies. But either way, <laughs> his name is called the word of God. The Bible says the armies uh, that followed him had white horses, fine linen. They were clean and white. Uh, other words, there's only one that shed blood. Uh-oh, uh-oh, don't get mad. Uh, I, I, I know you're about to jump out the window over there, but he didn't shed no blood for you. Uh-uh, <laughs> she didn't shed no blood for you. <laughs> you, you 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 better you you better get your joy back. <laughs> you letting somebody live rent free in your head. You, days are passing by one at a time, and you haven't laughed all day. When was the last time you sang a song of joy, y'all? When was the last time you danced in the middle of your room just because you could? Uh, no, most of us are, are living at forty nine percent joy, which means fifty nine percent the devil has stole. Other words, more than half of the joy is gone. And, and, and the key is to get from 49 to 51 minimum. Amen. The Bible says that, that out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. He treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of wrath of almighty God. And he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Look at the bold print. King of Kings, Lord of Lords of lords uh, uh, other words there's none greater there's none greater i saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowl in the air in the midst of heaven L listen he told the fowls and the birds hmm, remember his eye was on the sparrow <laughs> but this angel told the fowls of the air to come gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great god this supper is so great even the birds are coming other words, with the captains, with, with the kings, the, the, the flesh, free, bond, small, great. Everybody get ready. Everybody. Look at verse 19. He says, I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him to set on the horse and against his army. See, they, they, they and, the, and the beast was taken. Uh-oh, look at here. Verse 20, somebody ought to be saying hallelujah. And with him. The false prophets. So, so when we go back to the beginning of Revelation, we found out that there was a dragon, Satan, Lucifer, that got kicked out of heaven, took a third of the angels with him with his tail. But he gave the power to the beast. He gave his throne to the beast. And, and, and then another beast, the, the second beast, 
which was a false prophet. This false prophet represents a lot of ministries, false uh, ministries, false teachers all around the world that get people to worship the beast. It, it, it's, it's a part of the devil or the image of the beast as it was recorded in Revelation, uh, okay? Um, which deceived them, which had received the mark of the beast and them that worship his image. So, so you have some of them that received this mark, you have some of them that worship the beast, and you have some of them that wor worship his image. Now, what does it mean to worship the image of the beast and the beast? Well, what do you stand for? You know, you, you, you might say, I, 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 I don't stand for this. Um, well, if you don't stand for it, you shouldn't worship it. You shouldn't worship the image of it. You shouldn't be associated with it. If, if that's not what you do. Um, if you don't want a haircut, you shouldn't be in the barbershop. There's something to be said. Worship in his image. In other words, the sight of him, the look of him, the thought of him. Um, that's how deadly this is. He, he deceived. That's what the devil does. Again, the dragon, when he get, got kicked out of heaven, he gave his throne to the beast. He wanted people to worship the beast while he goes and does even more devilish deeds. The Bible says uh, that they both were cast into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. That was the end of the two beasts, the beast and the false prophet. Um, and, and chapter 20, and the remnant were, that were slain with the sword of them that sat upon the horse, and the sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. The birds were invited to the wedding <laughs> so they can eat. Hallelujah. Somebody praise God. <laughs> the Bible says the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse. Everybody else, which sword proceedeth out of his mouth? And the fowls filled their bellies with the flesh. Revelation chapter 20, I believe 19 and 20 really go together because uh, we talk about the judgments uh, that followed. And in Revelation 20, I can't even stop because uh, we see the end of the dragon in Revelation 20. Revelation 19, we saw the end of the beast and the false prophet. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. Uh, how many of you knew hallelujah wasn't in the New Testament except four times in Revelation chapter number 19? But guess what? They said it over and over and over. And they said it was like the voice of mighty waters and thundering. I wish our church could be like that. Our church here on earth could be where we praise God without boundary. Where we some of us get too cute to praise. We 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 come to church. It's a fashion show. We want want to be seen. We want to be cute, uh, and, and and we get disconnected from the whole purpose of God. Let's take a look. We got a little time. Let's take a look at chapter twenty. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon. Somebody say Hallelujah! That old serpent. Uh-oh, which is the devil and Satan and bound them for a thousand years. Stop right there. John says he looked and he saw an angel. The angel came from where? He came from heaven. But what did the angel have in his hand? He had a key to the bottomless pit and a great chain. Now check out the fact God didn't send, didn't come down to deal with the devil. He didn't send Jesus on this trip. It wasn't even uh, Michael the archangel. They kicked him out of, out of heaven. It, it, it was an unnamed angel. Uh-oh, come on, y'all. Just an average old Joe of an angel that God picked. What I'm saying is our God is so big. The kids reminded me big, big, big. He's too big for the devil. It's, it, it's, it's so under God because the devil is not God's equal. He's only God's equal in some of our minds. We give the devil more power than God has. We come on, give the come devil on. more credit. We, we speak more words of the devil than we do of God. When the word of God is the only thing that will stand and will not fail. And we are wise to put more of the word of God into our hearts so that it's into our minds, so that it comes out of our mouth, in our vocabulary, and in our actions. The Bible says in verse 2 that, that this, this unnamed angel with a key in one hand and a chain in another, uh, he laid hold on the dragon. Listen here, and, and look how many names. They got four names to describe him. How many times did they say hallelujah in, in, in chapter 19? Uh-huh. 
and, and he's going down this just dragon. Somehow you call him the old serpent. So you don't realize, look how this dragon that was kicked out of hell, I'm out of heaven into hell. He was the same serpent that tricked Eve and Adam. That's why they, they said that old serpent. He's been around old. He's been around a long time. He's been fooling to see. The first one, he fooled uh, Eve. And ever since that, that was his nature, to fool. How does he fool folk today in the church? He turn you against each other. He have you speaking words against your brothers and your sisters, against leadership, against people. That's how he fools us. We go to church thinking people don't like us. We go to church thinking people talking about us. We, we go to church thinking people are against us and our enemy, and God's given us a family. But the devil wants to deceive. When we are emotional, we get fooled. When we are spiritual, huh, we get stronger. Come on, y'all. When we are emotional, we get fooled by the devil. But when we are spiritual, we get stronger. He laid hold on the devil, on this dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. See, he's got a lot of names because he deceives you. Come on, y'all know the people with fake identities. They got four or five different passports, four or five driver's license. You know, when they arrest a big criminal, they got a lot of aliases, also known as John Smith, also known as, as, as Jimmy Rucker, also known. A lot of identities mean that you're not sincere. It means that you're not genuine, uh, a person who's not always the same all the time. Uh, a different name, different game. Uh, uh, hallelujah. Help us, Lord. Look at verse three. He says, and he cast him. He threw him, put a chain on him, threw him into the bottom of the pit, shed him up and set a seal on him. Come on, 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 come on. Let me do this real quick. <laughs> let, let, let me tell you how to deal with the devil. Uh, first of all, make sure you got the blood of Jesus. Uh, I hear people talking about they got the power to bound Satan. That's not scripture. That's not, man does not have the power to bound Satan. Uh, you can plead the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus has the power, amen. But you by yourself, you can't bind Satan, do, do, do nothing. Uh, it, it took an angel to come down from heaven. How do you deal with your devil? Look at how this angel did. The first thing he did, he laid hold of him, right? And he bound him. He laid hold on him and he bound him. The next thing, he cast him into a bondless pit, shut him up, and set a seal on him. That's how you need to deal with your devils right now, with your spiritual demons in your life. You, you, lay, lay hold, uh-oh, bound him. And I'm talking spiritually, in the blood of Jesus. Cast him into the bondless pit and shut him up, and then put a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. This is the millennium period. Um, and after that, he must be loose for a season, just for a little while longer. And during this millennium period, um, that's going to be a period of, of, of peace. Um, some of the scholars suggest that little babies will be able to ride lions and, and dance with bears because that sense of evil and fear and danger that we live in right now will be gone since the dragon, since the beast, since the false prophet are now gone. Uh, this, this, this dragon is only locked up for a thousand years and then he gets to come out again just for a little while. Uh, and we'll talk about that. Um, the Bible says that uh, till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that, he must be loosed for a season. Verse four says, I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshiped the beast, neither his image, neither had received their mark upon their foreheads or their heads. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first res resurrection or such the second death have no power, but they shall be priest of God and of Christ and shall reign with him for a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loose out of his prison and he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. God, may God 
and to gather them together to battle and the number of whom is in the sand of the sea. Armageddon was, 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 was prophesied. Here's another, uh, the, this battle here was prophesied as well. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camps of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Look at what came down. <laughs> look at when it came down. Look at where it came down from and look at what it did. This fire, uh, uh, God made a promise uh, back when Noah's days that, that he would not destroy the war with water anymore. Uh, but he didn't say it wouldn't get destroyed. Yeah, I, I believe it said it won't be water. Uh, but, but the songwriter said he promised fire next time. And here is that fire coming down in, in verse 19. Uh, and the devil that deceived them now was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are. They shall be tormented day and night forever. That's not an hallelujah. I just got chills right now. Uh, hallelujah moment. And the devil that deceived them, this is, this is payback. When the devil fools you, the God, God's got you. Even though the devil tricked you, God's got your back. He's got your payback. Uh, the, uh, he says he was thrown into a place where the beast and the false prophet was. See, see, they were already there burning, tormented day and night forever and forever. Uh, John wasn't finished. He says in verse number 11, I, I saw a great white throne and him that sat upon it and whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And, and another book was open, which was the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. All right now. Uh-oh. According to our, and that's the same way we'll be judged also according to our works. See, many of us don't think that God sees, that God can see. You know, um, but God is, 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 he can see everything. He's all knowing. He's all powerful. And, and if your name's not written in the book of life, then, then uh, unfortunately, there's only one other place to go. Verse 13 says, the sea gave up the dead, which were in it. Death and hell delivered up the dead, which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Stop hiding. Stop hiding. Everybody got a time card. Everybody's got a time card. Uh, and the death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Even death and hell. God's got the victory over the grave. Jesus said it. I've got victory over death. I've got victory over the grave. They were cast into the lake of fire right behind the dragon who followed the beast and the false prophet. Revelation chapter 19 and 20 describes the end of this devil, of our biggest enemy for the church. And, and that's one of the things that I want everybody to see right now, uh, who the enemy of the church is. If you look at your church as a family, a family is going to have a matriot, a patriot many times. Some only have one that, that wear two hats. Uh, you typically have youth. Uh, some are older than others. Some are a little stronger. They're different sizes. And, and, and it's probably true in that family that you don't always agree that even though you share the same blood, you can be different. I don't know if your family's like mine. You could you could be alike in a lot of ways. You know, oh, y'all look just like sisters. You look just like sister brothers. But the truth is, you know, you're totally opposite. But you're still family. But you're still family. And God meant that for his church. This is... You know, we only have two more chapters left in this, this study of Revelation. Um, and, and verse 19 and 20 are so, so powerful. When we get to 21, we talk about a new heaven and earth. Uh, out with the old and in with what God has new for our lives. 
whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. How do you get your name in the book of life? How can you be sure? I, I mean, I'm being honest. I, you know, I had some questions with, you know, typically if you're driving on, on, on a freeway and you see some lights in the back, you know, pull you over and a man or a woman walks up with a uniform and a badge and a belt with a gun on it, you probably think that might be a police officer. If, 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 if there was a fire uh, in your neighborhood and all of a sudden you heard a siren and saw a vehicle speeding that way, you might think that maybe it's a, a fire truck. If there was an accident and someone was hurt and, and you see lights coming down the road and you hear them, uh, the sound of the siren, you might think it's an ambulance. Uh, or, or something, but but what I'm saying is the reason why you would make that assumption that the first was a police officer, the second was a fireman, uh, and and the third one uh, was an ambulance is because they do that kind of work. That's what the policeman does because he's doing it. If you see him pull people over, write tickets, you say, yeah, that's got to be a policeman. If you watch the fireman take the hose off the truck and run the water and put the fire out of the house, you would make an assumption that that's probably a fireman. And on the other hand, if you saw that man and woman get out of that ambulance and go over and put oxygen and listen to the heartbeat and take the pulse and, 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 and put the stretcher, and you would make the assumption that that person uh, is a care provider, is a, is a health care provider. If you went to the hospital and and, 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 and and the doctor begins to do surgery, you would make an assumption that that doctor is a surgeon. If you went to another doctor and he told you to open your mouth wide and, and, and put on the mirror on his forehead with the glasses and tell you to say, you would make the assumption that that particular doctor is a dentist. If you go uh, to, to the doctor and he only wants to see kids, you're going to say he's a pediatrician. What I'm saying to you is if you are a Christian, how is somebody supposed to know? If you are a, a, a preacher, how is somebody supposed to know if you don't ever preach? If you're a Christian, how is somebody supposed to know you're a Christian if you don't ever love, if you don't ever show the love of Christ in you? What does that mean? That means forgiving people. Even though they've done wrong and made mistakes. That means trying hard to see the good in a bad situation. How will they know that I'm a pastor if I don't ever pastor anybody? You couldn't call me pastor if I don't pastor nobody. You can't call me a preacher if I don't preach anymore. You can call somebody a deacon and don't deacon. Or usher who don't usher. Or a singer that don't sing. How can you say they're a choir member if they never come to rehearsal and they never sing? Somebody need to say amen. I'm all teaching. The reason, the reason that we can say we're Christians is one four-letter word. They will know we are Christians, not by our title. They will not know we're Christians because of our robe. They will not know we're Christians because of our longevity in the church. They will not know we're Christians by how much we give. They will not uh, 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 know we're Christians by our vocabulary or our intellect. They will not know we're Christians by anything else except love, except love. In the world, believe me, the love of Christ is a bright light and the people can't see your light. Amen. We need to make sure and check that book and make sure our book, our name is up in that book, not our nickname. You can't go to heaven on your nickname. Uh-oh, help me. I'm talking about your real name, your government name. <laughs> make sure that name is written in the book because if it's not, the Bible says in verse 15, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Huh? When you want a promotion, they ask your job. They ask your, your they ask your boss, right? President of the company, you want a promotion, he's gonna ask your manager. Are you worthy? Uh-oh, help me. Let me make this plain for you. If you're going for a job interview, you got to have a reference. Ooh, hallelujah. Make this plain, Jesus. They're going to want to ask somebody else other than you about you. Oh, Jesus, make this plain. Hallelujah. When, when, when you want that job, you want that interview. 
uh, you get the interview, uh, and, and now the interview's over, they're going to call your references and check and find out if what you said was true. I know I, I, I don't I know y'all ain't looking for no jobs, but if you're looking for a job, this is what you got to go through. What I'm saying is they're going to verify. If you say you got an education over here, they're not going to take your word for it. They're going to call that school and find out if you got a degree. Some of you know what I'm talking about here. Uh, but, 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 mm, mm, mm. when it comes to church and Christian life, what would your pastor say about you being faithful? You know, God's going to ask your pastor where they're faithful, even though he knows everything. <laughs> oh, bless the Lord. I thank God that we got faithful folk on this call. Because if not, I'd be fighting. Somebody's feelings would be hurt. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just take it that we got all faithful folk and everybody didn't check. But the truth is, these little titles and that stuff don't mean nothing. Titles don't. What good is a fireman if he ain't put out no fire? You better quit it. What good is a police officer? He's not protecting your community. You better stop it. What good is it is a doctor if he's not making nobody well? What good is a teacher if they don't teach you nothing? Huh? What good is a job if you never get a check? What good is a Christian if you don't have any love? No commitment. What does your pastor say about you? Will your pastor say you're faithful? Just wave your hand. Just wave your hand. We're going to get ready to dismiss. Just wave your hand. Just wave your hand. Amen. 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 Some of you ain't waving. Okay. Amen. Well, I tell you what, in the end, it ain't, it ain't what the pastor say. It's what God says. Pastor only still a little bit. It's what God says. At the end of the day, he's going to ask your pastor, did he help you? Did she help you? Was she faithful? Was she committed? Did she show love? Did, did he forgive? Did he help? Did, 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 you know, he's going to ask, even though he knows. Even though he knows everything. The reason that I say this is this is life and death. This is life and death right here. The Bible says, whosoever was not found written. It's going to be a whole lot of name tags in hell. It's going to be a whole lot of choir robes in hell, preaching robes, deacon suits, deacon benches. It's going to be a whole lot of them in hell because there are some folk who are not preparing themselves for the marriage of the Lamb. There are some folk that are going through the motion. You know, there, there, there are some folk, you know, that, that, uh, have not put God first. Have not put God first. And when I think about in my life, all that he's done for me, how can I not give him honor? How can I not give him? See, see, that's the thing about opening the church up. You can see real quick people's motives. They, you know, some folks some folk just like a crowd. Some folks just want to be seen. Some folks just want, and it's not all, it's a small percentage. It's a small percentage, but it takes all kind to make up that church. What I'm saying is make sure that's not you. Make sure it's not you. Where's our humility at? Are we still teachable? And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Father God, we say thank you for an opportunity to hear your word and to see what's in store as you reveal. I pray right now on the sound of my voice, Lord, that you will drive in somebody's driveway right now, Lord, that you will sit in their living room, get up all in their kitchen right now and have a real conversation, just you and them, one by one, each of us, Lord, have a real conversation with each of us. Show us your blueprint. Show us your blueprint, Lord. Oh, the one you shared with me, Lord. Let somebody else see it. Let somebody else see it so they can see the reason that they had a, a plumber's belt on or an electrician's belt on or a roofer's belt or a brick mason's belt on. Show them right now, Lord. 
as we work and build your foundation for your ministry. Prove us. Prove us. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love. I love y'all. I love. Our love is the only way. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to pray for um, all of our members. I understand Deacon Chester is is in the hospital. I got a message today. We definitely want to keep him in prayer and lift him up. And also remember Sister Perkins' family right now. I just I was informed a few days ago of a terrible, terrible situation of accident that her her, her, her grandbabies were in, and uh, it left uh, left some injuries, some some lifelong injuries for these babies. And uh, so keep her in prayer. Please do not only her, but our list continues on. Um, you know, um, we never get off the prayer list. That's just the way it is. Um, and prayer is a good thing. But we are a praying ministry, and we believe in ministry. And I do believe that God has brought us together. And I hope that you all agree with me and believe that. Um, all the times are not smooth. I know it. Um, but you do have a pastor that loves you and a pastor that wants to see you grow in grace. I can say that uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Uh, you do have a pastor that don't hold grudges, a pastor that has a heart of forgiveness and a pastor that does look for the best uh, in each of his members. And, um, and, and for that is something to be grateful for. Uh, and finally, as we close, don't let the devil deceive you. Don't let the devil deceive you. And I'm going to have to come on back with that message here soon. Don't let the devil fool you is, is the title of it. Um, don't let him fool you. That's what he does best. And uh, go back to what Paul told us. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, my brothers and sisters. We are not each other's enemies. And I mean church A, church B, church on the west side, church. We are not each other's enemy. And we have to see that even though sometimes feelings get hurt, because we're around a lot of passionate people who are passionate uh, about, most are passionate about Christ, you know? Um, so, so remember that, remember that. And if, um, give somebody another chance, uh, just forgive them uh, if, if there was a misunderstanding and understand that uh, it wasn't in their heart, but maybe just a mistake in the head. And I think we'll be able to move along better as a family. So God bless everyone. Um, Pastor, um, not to cut you off, I um, just received a text message from um, Sister Mamie. Can y'all please um, oh, geez. keep her daughter in prayer? Um, please keep her in prayer and then um, keep the Aldridge husband and Callaway family in prayer. Sister Paula, it's fading out. I can't hear what you're saying. I said, can you guys, I just received a text message from Sister Mamie. Okay, Sister Mamie. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Can y'all keep her daughter in prayer? They found her unresponsive, so they had to rush her to the hospital, and they had to do something to bring her back, too. Um, and then pray for the husband, Callaway, and Audrey's family. Okay, amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Most gracious God, we come. You've heard the report. You've heard the testimony. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will move on every situation that we've mentioned and even those we have not mentioned. We've called the names of, of some of our brothers and sisters, Lord. You already know their name. You know what they're going through right now. You told us to knock, to seek, and to ask if we were to have a door open, if we were to find, or if we were to receive, and that's what we're doing right now. Pray, Lord, that you will make us stronger as a family and, and make Shiloh a place of love and a place of healing. I pray for our sick. I pray for our uh, discouraged. I pray for our lonely. In the name of Jesus, show up, God, like only you can. 
Have your way in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good night, everybody. Good night. Hey, Nick and Felipe, can you stay on for a moment? All right. Gotta stop recording. Are you there, Deke? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Listen, Sunday is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day in advance. Um, I wanted to ask you for something. Um, I wanted to do, do something a little different this this Sunday. Um, uh, testimonies from fathers. Uh, a testimony from a father, kind of like that. And I just wanted um, just one verse and just five minutes um, of what the verse means in relationship you know, to being a father, even being a son, um, or even related to God being your father or son. Um, but I just want to give a platform for our deacons um, to start doing more talking and teaching and um, uh, get Pastor McNair involved in some other areas. But I really want to start this discipleship. So I wanted to know if Sunday uh, during the service, if you would prepare yourself to speak just for like five minutes. Um, and uh, if, you, if you need help with that scripture, I got a, a couple just, just if, you, if you need. But um, I just want more or less just an opportunity for testimony um, and to share. I believe that God speaks to all of us, especially the men, uh, in the way to be leaders. And uh, I didn't know if you were interested in doing that or not. Let me just stop and ask if you're interested. Yeah, I can do that because uh, Sunday after church, uh, uh, Sunday, uh, uh, this last Sunday when we're at church, uh, Sister Dana recorded a quick Father's Day message, but it wasn't no five minutes. You said Sister Dana I, recorded something? Yeah, she recorded me and uh, Fernando. Hang on, Felipe. Let, let me change my input because my uh, speaker. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. What is going on with my volume here? No, I don't hear it. Let's see. One, two, one, two. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, can you hear me now? It's kind of fuzzing, fuzzing out. It is. No, I'm not on the same, on the one. Okay, but you were saying? Yeah, Sister Dana recorded something. It's a real brief thing on Father's Day. Me oh, and, Fernand and Fernando. Okay. But it was, it was only like a couple minutes, but I can do something Sunday. Okay, yeah, I, I just wanted just five minutes of live. I didn't know they were doing that. Yeah, she wanted to get something before before Father's Day, so. Okay. Yeah, I would I would we probably hold that off and use that in another week. But okay. we're going to go live on Father's Day. All right then. Okay, sounds good. Yep. Okay, all righty. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow.